I've talked about how a water-powered car scientifically is impossible before, but I guess that wasn't enough, so here we go, part two. Water is clearly not combustible as water, however water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. So the false idea these idiots keep spreading is that if we can separate these, we'll have hydrogen fuel and we'll be able to run a car from water. The problem is that the enthalpy of formation for water is negative, which means that water requires added energy to be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen. We fundamentally understand this because we know that we need to use electricity to separate water to hydrogen and oxygen. This amount of energy used to separate the molecules is much greater than even the amount of energy stored in these two elements, much less the amount that could be harvested in a hydrogen burning engine. Now some other people say that once hydrogen and oxygen are separated, combining them will give off energy, and this is true. But because we had to use energy to split the water first, based on the second law of thermodynamics, we will never get as much energy back from combining hydrogen and oxygen as we put into the separation. Even if we got the same energy back that we put in, we would still be at a net zero energy. The amount of energy we get from the combination of the elements is the exact same as we used to separate them. And this false claim isn't a new concept. In 1935, Charles Garrett made this false claim, and his patent proved he was straight up lying. In the 1980s, there was a guy named Stanley Meyer who claimed he created a water fueled vehicle, and was found guilty of fraud in 1996. There's a lot more stories just like this. A bunch of con men trying to get investors for something that's scientifically impossible.